Hey guys and girls and welcome to the second video in the series where we are going to build a GraphQL API with Phoenix and Elixir uh, and we're going to base it off the Medium block platform. So what I want to do in this episode is to set everything up so that we can start coding in the next episode and we'll go over some of the basics of Phoenix. So first I'm going to make a new project in my terminal. I'm going to um, make a new folder and I'm going to call it a Medium clone. We're going to cd into the folder and then we're going to start a new project. And the way you do it with Phoenix is by saying mix phoenix.new and then we can pass it some options. So because we're not using the front end features of Phoenix, um, we're going to tell that we're not going to need any of the scaffolded HTML files and we're not going to use the asset pipeline. And by default, Phoenix uses branch, but you can switch that out for Webpack if you, if you desire that. Um, and I think actually that they're going to change over to Webpack in the next major update of Phoenix. Um, the last argument is going to be our project name and let's call it um, Medium GraphQL API and hit enter. So do we need the dependencies? Yes, we do. Let's kind of grab them and compile them. Okay, so when that's done, we're going to cd into the project and I'm going to open my code editor. I use Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio code but you can use whatever. Um, I'll quickly show you the two extensions that I use for Elixir. That's the default Elixir language support for Visual Studio Code and the other one is the Elixir formatter and we are going to set it up this episode. Uh, but if you use Visual Studio Code, uh, make sure to get them. So if we go back to our folder. These are all the folders that Phoenix gave us. We have a build folder. This is where your project goes after building it. Uh, the config files. Um, these are all the different options for a production, a test environment and a development environment. So your different uh, databases and stuff like that. The credentials go in here. The dependencies that Phoenix uses, uh, we are going to add a few more later. We have the lib folder. This is pretty much where your code is going to go. Um, you have two main folders, the web folder uh, and just your product name. This is where pretty much all of your business logic is going to go. And we have a web folder and this is pretty much where all your code is going to live um, that interacts with the client. <laughs> Um, we have a private folder. This is where your migrations and your seed file um, are located and get text and I actually never op opened this map because I never had to use it. But it seems like this is where your um, translations file for the uh, Ecto error messages go. Pretty much look like this. So it looks like it. So um, I think what you can do is um, add different language support for your error messages. Then we have our test folder. This is where your tests live. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to touch on the subject of tests uh, in this video series. We might, not sure yet. Um, we have our mix file. This is where you um, add dependencies and where your general project settings go. So um, what I like to do first is initialize a Git repository. So let's say git init. And let's add all the files that we have right now and commit it with the message initial oh, commits. Um, so once that's done, I like to make a repository on GitHub for this. Um, and I have something called Hub. Uh, and Hub is a little program that you can install um, via Homebrew. And what it does, it actually, if you run this command, Hub creates, it will make a repository on GitHub, which is really nice. I'll leave a description or uh, a download link in the description. Okay, so let's push it to GitHub, git push, origin master. And there we go. And what I like to use um, is an extra feature set for Git. It's called Git flow. Um, and what it does, it gives you a few extra options uh, for easy branching. Um, and the way you set it up is by initializing it by git flow init. And it's going to ask you for a few settings. I usually use the default one, so I'm just going to hit enter for a few times. And then we are on the develop branch. 
And I'm gonna push that as well to GitHub. Develop. And I'll leave a, uh, a link in the description how to install GitFlow. So let's get started with our first little feature and we're gonna set up the code formatting so we have consistent code throughout our project. Um, so with GitFlow, let's start a new branch. And the way you do that with GitFlow is by typing in git flow feature start. And we're gonna call it uh, setup form formatter. And there we go. So we got a new branch. Um, and because I have the extension um, from Visual Studio Code, it's already working. Um, it's working whenever I save a file. But because we also want to run it once through our whole project, you do that with a command, um, we need to set up a file with the settings, how to configure it. So uh, we're going to make a new file. We're going to call it formatter dot exs and in this file you specify uh, specify the rules um, so I'm just gonna copy paste the rules that elixir put on their website so if we go over it if you run mix format watch uh, which is what we're gonna do in a second it's gonna run over all these folders and files so the mix file config lib test folders and all the files in there so let's save that and then we can run mix format and it should go over all the files that we specified and um, get rid of any everything that we don't need okay there we go so you can see that there are a lot of changes in all the folders and it says found key found coded keyword test but the quotes are not required i think i had this before and it already fixed it yeah so that's this it already fixed it. So let's quickly add that git add and git commit run formatter. And let's quickly run mix ecto.create to create our database as well. It's not really in this in this shouldn't be in this branch, but let's do it quickly. So as we can see, the database is created and we can check that out. I use postco for um, database stuff. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. Let's connect. And it should be called medium, 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 medium GraphQL API dev. There is the database and there's nothing in there yet, but we have the database. I'm gonna close that. And let's see if it, everything works. So let's run the server for the first time. Uh, mix phoenix.server. And now it's running on localhost 4000. So let's just quickly check it out if everything works correctly. We don't have an endpoint yet, so we're probably going to get an error. Well, I'm pretty sure we're going to get an error. Yeah, there we have it. So we don't have a route yet. Um, we're going to do that in the next episode. Okay, so let's quickly hop back into our code editor and finish this. So I'm going to kill the server by tapping Ctrl C twice. Um, and I don't think there's anything to commit. No. So we're going to finish this feature and um, with git flow, you do it by saying git flow feature finish and tapping enter. And this is going to merge the feature branch back into the development branch. So you can see that because we run the formatter, a lot of files changed. Those are now committed into the development branch. So the last thing we do is push this to GitHub. So we do git. Oop git push origin develop and now we have everything saved and backed up okay so that was it for this episode in the next episode we'll add our first uh, model and context uh, which is going to be the user model so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode